the Kansas City Chiefs 20, and the Carolina Panthers 17. Kick ass. How sweet was that? Trailing 17 to three, going into the fourth quarter. Doing nothing offensively. But that's why we watch four quarters of Chiefs football. That's why we watch four quarters of Chiefs football. Yeah, I had to say that twice because some people don't. Some people say, eh, it's not looking good. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Kansas City Chiefs fans worldwide, enjoy this one because I am. Hell yeah, man. When the schedule came out in April, I'm not a freaking hater, don't get me wrong. When I saw that we had to go to Carolina in the second week of November to face the NFC champion Carolina Panthers, I said, we're probably going to lose that game. All right, let's break it down, folks. It didn't start off good. As I mentioned, the Panthers were up 17-3. to you know, Alex Smith is wearing this protective bubble helmet to keep him, uh, I guess it, it has, ex it, it's obviously bigger. You could tell by watching, you could tell by watching the game today, his, his head looked ginormous. Um, and it was, it was an extra, it was an extra helmet size, like I said, and he missed a shitload of passes, man. We could have had our comeback a lot sooner and we wouldn't have to rely on our defense. If Alex Smith could have hit, uh, I don't know, Conley when he was open in the end zone, uh, Kelsey went twice when he was open in the end zone, but you know, I don't want to rain on the parade, but I got to call it like I see it. You know, I got to, I got to say the good things. And I got to say the bad things. And since I touched on the bad things, Let's get it right here. Let's let's just touch on it. We got to keep it real, folks. We can't just put on our blinders and say yippee do, yippee i a, everything's great. We're going to the Super Bowl because let's look let's look at the stats. As I mentioned, Alex Smith, twenty five of thirty eight, one hundred and seventy eight yards, no touchdowns, one interception. Yeah, that he underthrew when he had Tyreek Hill open. Uh, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, I hope Alex Smith. Goes back to his normal helmet, not the extra concussion protocol helmet that he has to wear because he just wasn't getting a lot of lift on his passes. And a lot of those balls were sailing. And uh, going forward, we need to get that addressed because the Kansas City Chiefs have some freaking playmakers at wide receiver. And Jeremy Macklin wasn't playing today. Jeremy Macklin was not playing. And this freaking Tyreek Hill, man, I know – and I know you, many of you, some of you watch my YouTube. I was extremely critical of him when we drafted him because of the, the domestic dispute. But you know, the, as a lot of people mentioned, the prosecuting attorney, prosecuting attorney, um, has said Tyree Kill has, uh, he's uh, he's done everything he's needed to do to, uh, you know, to answer the questions and do all that shit. But man, forgive me. For, uh, I'm speechless on how good this kid is because I didn't see it. I did not see uh, Tyree Kill being this good of a wide receiver, but man, he was a steal in the fifth round. What a freak. He, he was the Chiefs leading wide receiver. Tyree Kill had 10 catches for 89 yards. Uh, he He's made some plays that were, uh, shit, quite frankly, the best. The next wide receiver had four Albert Wilson had four receptions for 25 yards and Conley had one reception for 12 yards. Oh golly. That's not good. we got to have Jeremy. We're going to get Jeremy back with back. I'll, I'll touch on that just here in a second. <clears throat> but like I said, trailing 17 to three at Carolina in the fourth corner, you really don't have any business winning that game, but how'd they do it? After the Chiefs kicked the field goal with 10 and a half minutes left to cut the lead to 17 to 6, you know, you, you I'm sure we never thought at the time, it's fourth and 10, man, at the 18 yard line. We're not going to be down there probably again. If we do, it's a miracle. Let's go for the fourth and 10. No, with 12 minutes, I'm sorry, with 12 minutes and seven seconds left, Andy Reid decides to kick the field goal to pull within 11 with 12 minutes left. Wow. Uh, you know, Santos was our like our MVP for eight straight quarters excuse me, going back to last week's game. So he made the kick. And then when we finally blitz, man, 
When you saw the blitz coming up the middle, you saw an all-out safety blitz. You saw Daniel Sorensen and Ron Parker putting the pressure on Cam Newton. What happened? Cam Newton tried to make a play with his arm, something he's really capable of doing because he freaking got an awesome arm. Threw off his back foot. Eric Berry at the 42-yard line makes an interception, and he looks like freaking Walter Payton. <laughs> When he gets the ball in his hands, he's zigging and he's zag zagging. He's making uh, offensive players who now defensive players miss. And he took a monster hit by the offensive tackle. The Panthers spun around, ran clear ass across the field from the 24-yard line after he got hit, spun around, and went right to the end zone for a touchdown, making the score 17-12. to Thank God the Chiefs were able to uh, get the two-point conversion. On that uh, two-yard pass, two-yard pass to Kelsey for the two-point uh, two conversion, but what a hell of a play! What a hell of a scheme! I'm trying to tell you, like I've said to you in the last three or four weeks, Bob Sutton is a freaking genius when it comes to dialing up blitz schemes, and uh, that was a sensational blitz. It worked. It made it 17 to 14. Chiefs are able to force a punt. Freaking awesome job of the defense. We drive down the field. Gosh, Conley was open on a play. Then Kelsey was open on the next play. And Alex Smith missed him. We had to settle for a field goal. It could have came back and bit us in the ass. But we tied it on that drive. It made it 17-all. How sweet is that, man? I never would have thought we'd have came back when it was 17-3. to Now it's 17-17. to <laughs> Mom's the word, Gus. We freaking came back and we tied it. So now it's all of a sudden 17 up. Each team exchanged punts. 30 seconds left in the game. Panthers try to make a play to get back in the field goal range. And Marcus freaking Peters, wow, took that ball from a big receiver. Freaking Benjamin, the Panthers wide receiver, is huge. He's a big freaking physical wide receiver, way over 200 pounds. He's a beast, Benjamin is. And Peters said, give me that ball. Give me that ball. Took off, ran to the 24-yard line, and made a sensational punt. The ball into the crowd. You're not supposed to do that. Thank God it was only a five-yard penalty. It was still badass. I say that because we won. We get down. Game over. Santos makes a 37-yard field goal after Spencer Ware runs for 11 yards. I'm freaking speechless, to be honest with you. I might even sound like I'm kind of rambling. But... I'm freaking ecstatic, man. What a freaking win. The Chiefs can freaking build off this game, man, because they weren't supposed to win. I know you say, well, you, you always play to win. You, you never you never, um, you never, never just uh, go out there to lose because you're supposed to lose. Freaking our defense is pretty damn good, and we got playmakers on offense. But Marcus Peters, Eric Berry, they get the game ball. They can each have their own, or they can split the only game ball they hand out. What a hell of a play. Hell of a play. I'm so proud of this freaking team going forward. The Chiefs are 7-2. and two. And the Kansas City Chiefs at this time currently stand the second seed in the AFC. Your Kansas City Chiefs at the present time are the second seed in the American Football Conference. We control our destiny to get a bye. We're one game behind the Patriots, who are currently playing at this time. Um, I think even if the Patriots lose today, if they lose to an, a an NFC team because they're playing the Seahawks, the Chiefs will still be behind the Patriots for home field advantage. But we got some things to clear up. As I mentioned, Alex Smith has got to get on it. He's had, he had receivers open, and this is the best weaponry Alex Smith has had. Conley's he's he's a damn good receiver, and he was open quite a bit today, and Alex, Alex Smith was just missing him. Alex, take off the bubblehead helmet. You don't need to wear it. You were a lot better without your bubble head helmet. It's too big. It's too bubbly. You're overthrowing your receivers too much. You got to get the bubble head off. Um, next week, the Kansas City Chiefs host the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers won an impressive game today in, in Tampa against uh, the Chicago Bears, 36 to 10. They're they're a good, young, hungry team. We can't take them lightly. We can't sleepwalk through the game like we did last week against Jacksonville and wait for them to lose because the Buccaneers can steal it. We can't take the Buccaneers lightly. We got to freaking ride this momentum because Broncos got to buy, okay? Broncos aren't playing next week. The Denver Broncos have two weeks to get ready to host the Kansas City Chiefs in Denver. And at the present time, the Denver Broncos are a half game back. But Kansas City Chiefs fans worldwide, of all ages, boys and girls. Enjoy this game. Enjoy it. The Chiefs came back. It was a great comeback. We control our destiny. 
to be the second seed in the AFC. D Ford, another sack. He's got nine. Could have had ten if freaking Phillip Gaines wasn't holding the wide receiver down the field. But D Ford, props to you, buddy. Chris Jones had a big sack. We're looking forward to next week as the Kansas City Chiefs take on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Until next time, this is an exhausted, happy, ecstatic, content, hungry, shaggy shame saying, you guys all fucking kick ass. Go Chiefs!